Summer, 1940. RAF, Hornchurch Airfield. Essex. On the runway, two nearly identical Supermarine Spitfires wait beneath the gray English sky. Both carry the same Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, the same eight-gun wings, and the same pilot squadron leader Desmond Cook. Yet what happens next would reveal a secret edge that could decide the fate of Britain itself. Cook eases the throttle forward on the first aircraft. The Spitfire roars across the airstrip. Takeoff run, 320 yards. Eleven minutes later, it claws its way to 20,000 feet. Reaching its service ceiling at 32,000, where the thin air begins to choke the engine. Twenty minutes later, Cook repeats the same test in the second Spitfire identical frame. Identical power plant, but with one crucial change, a different propeller. Takeoff run, 225 yards. Climb to 20,000 feet in just 7 minutes and 42 seconds. Ceiling, 39,000 feet. The only difference between these two machines and between victory and defeat in the skies over Britain is three spinning blades of polished aluminum. The design was the brainchild of an engineer the industry once dismissed as a dreamer, Frank Walker Caldwell. His impossible constant speed propeller would not only transform the Battle of Britain, but help Allied bombers fly a hundred miles per hour faster across every theater of the war. The story began eight years earlier, in a small, oil-stained workshop at Hamilton Standard Propeller Corporation in East Hartford, Connecticut. It was February 1932, and 43-year-old Caldwell, an MIT-trained engineer with a quiet, mathematical confidence, stood before a test rig shaking with mechanical fury. On it spun a metal propeller unlike anything aviation had ever seen. Three blades of aluminum capable of changing their pitch angle thousands of times per minute. Three days earlier, Boeing had called from Seattle with a desperate plea. Their revolutionary airliner, the Model 247, was stranded at Denver's high-altitude airport, unable to climb over the Rocky Mountains. Its fixed-pitch wooden propellers, tuned for cruising speed, left the aircraft gasping for lift. Airline executives demanded a solution or threatened to abandon Boeing altogether. For years, American aviation experts had dismissed variable-pitch propellers as an unnecessary experiment, too heavy, too complex, and too delicate for the cold. Thin air of high altitude, as privately warned Caldwell that such systems would never work in combat conditions, but Caldwell trusted the data, not the doubts. When tunnel tests showed that automatic pitch control could dramatically increase climb rate, speed, and fuel efficiency all through one simple principle, allowing the propeller, not the pilot, to find the perfect angle for every phase of flight. On February 15, 1933, United Airlines agreed to a single test flight. Test pilot Eddie Allen took off from Denver in a Boeing 247 fitted with Caldwell S experimental propeller. The aircraft climbed past 6,000 feet, then 8,000, then 10,000, crossing the Continental Divide with ease. By nightfall, telegrams confirmed the results. The constant speed propeller had exceeded every performance claim. Airline orders flooded in and so did interest from the U.S. military, as the world edged toward war. Caldwell's innovation was about to become a weapon. The U.S. Navy wanted fighters that could outclimb and outrun anything Germany or Japan could build. His hydraulic system, using engine oil to adjust blade angle automatically, delivered exactly that. During takeoff, the blade shifted to a fine pitch for maximum thrust, like a car in low gear. In level flight, they coarsened for efficiency and speed. And if an engine failed, the blades could feather flat to the wind, preventing drag and saving both aircraft and crew. The numbers were staggering. Climb rate up 40%. Service ceiling raised by 7,000 feet. Fuel economy improved by 15%. On paper, it was revolutionary. But the military demanded proof. Caldwell responded by inventing a brutal new testing regime, the World Test, which hammered propellers under conditions far harsher than combat itself. Blades endured 500-hour endurance trials, temperatures from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, stresses 50% above their rated limits. Even so, critics remained loud. Rival firms like Curtis Wright called the design dangerous and unreliable. Engineers argued that hydraulic systems would freeze solid at altitude. Caldwell answered not with speeches, but with results. Cold weather testing proved that his design actually performed better in thin cold air, 
the thicker oil providing more stable pressure. The final turning point came on March 21, 1934, at Selfridge Field, Michigan. Two identical P-26 fighters took off side by side, one with a fixed-pitch propeller, the other with Caldwell's constant speed system. The fixed-pitch aircraft reached 10,000 feet in 8 minutes 30 seconds. The other arrived in 5 minutes 40 seconds faster, higher, and far more efficient. Colonel Carl Spots, later commander of all U.S. Air Forces in Europe, wrote that the performance advantage was a fundamental shift in air combat capability. By the end of 1934, Hamilton's standards production lines ran without pause, building propellers for every branch of the American military. But across the Atlantic, Europe lagged dangerously behind. German bf 19 still relied on manual propeller controls. In Britain's Spitfires and Hurricanes were limited to two position systems, one for climbing, one for cruising, with no automatic adjustment. The results were devastating. During early combat over France, RAF pilots found themselves outclimbed and outmaneuvered above 15,000 feet. Air Marshal Hugh Dowding privately admitted that Britain's fighters were technologically outmatched. Reports from the front warned that German aircraft were dominating the vertical fight all because of superior propeller control. Caldwell's data, presented years earlier to the Society of Automotive Engineers, had predicted exactly this. His calculations showed constant speed propellers could increase thrust by 40% and raise. Altitude performance by more than a mile, yet European engineers had dismissed the concept as American over-engineering. By 1939, the British Air Ministry finally acted. They licensed Hamilton's standards design, producing it through the de Havilland Company. The transformation was immediate. Spitfires fitted with the new propeller could climb faster, fly higher, and hold speed through combat turns. In the summer of 1940, as the Luftwaffe darkened the skies over Britain, this innovation, three blades of aluminum, born from one man's stubborn faith in mathematics, gave the Royal Air Force the edge it desperately needed. The Battle of Britain would be remembered for its bravery, its sacrifice, and its machines. But hidden behind the roar of every Merlin engine was the quiet genius of Frank Caldwell, the engineer whose impossible idea helped save a nation.